Hey, so I'm Jack from Oddbug Studio. I am the lead designer and owner, and we've just released The Lost Bear. We've been working on it for six months. It's a 2D VR platform that's exclusive to PSVR, and uh, you guys just played it today. So the unique thing about The Lost Bear is that it's a 2D platformer in a VR experience. So basically imagine it as like a virtual puppet theater in which you watch the game play out on a 2D stage, but around you is a world similar to that that you're playing in that changes as you progress through it. The story follows Warner, who is a little girl. She loses her teddy bear and it's the adventure of her gaining her courage to, to save her little teddy bear and return home to her brother. That's a really good way of explaining it, by the way. I've done it a lot. I've tried to talk to my friends about this game and they're like, what, what do you mean? It's yeah. a 2D platformer, but it's in VR. And I'm like, yeah, but... Uh. It's so annoying yeah. because it's like, it, it's a simple concept when you think about it, but yeah. most people just... I like, no, well, it doesn't make sense. Jumanji is like an example of like when you're playing a game but that world comes yeah. out around you, that's kind of what, but there's no Robin Williams, so it's not as good. Uh, <laughs> well, this is too good. How did this idea arise? It's so unique, it's so different. Did, were you thinking of originally just making a side-scrolling platformer or? So both our artists are obviously really talented 2D artists, but the thing is, Play Dead are already rocking cinematic platformers. Like Limbo and Inside are 10 out of 10 games, so we didn't really want to compete with them. So we thought if we put it into VR, it creates a unique experience, different to the first-person shooters or the touchy-feely picking stuff up VR games. We wanted to create a more chilled, relaxed experience that you could become immersed in that world, and the 2D platformer in Lost Bear really allowed us to do that. And also, because our lead artist, Martin, is from the Czech Republic, we've kind of got that heritage of, like, Eastern European puppet shows, so that kind of all led into the, the concept that is Lost Bear now. Yeah, because I was wondering if any of you have been in the theatre environment, because you're not just watching it on a screen, you kind of feel more immersed in the experience, and it's it's a very unique way of viewing VR and and the way that games can be immersive. So, Well, somebody uh, reviewed it and said it's the future of cinema. Because, like, uh, you know, like 4D movies where they blow stuff at you and, like, water drops on you? It would be cool to see that happen. I'd like to go see movies that are more like this, but who knows? It's quite expensive to do, so who knows? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So because it's quite a unique idea, and usually when you're playing a VR game, people are used to kind of first person, so they're seeing the environment they're within the game. Do you find that you kind of have to coax people to look around them? Are they just fixated on the 2D platform in front of them? Are they actually looking? Well, obviously EGX is not the best place to show it because we do use a lot of 3D sound. So for example, the bug section at the cliff, he's actually got a sound on him that makes you, att like you're attracted to that noise because it's so much louder. Obviously you can't hear it here, but yeah, we had to work a lot on drawing focus between 2D and 3D to get people's attention in the right place because if you're not looking at that 2D, you're gonna die. <laughs> So when making a virtual reality game, obviously there's there's a lot more to think about in that sense where you where you want them to look and you know you don't want them to miss things and also because it is a platformer and you need to be you know jumping and making sure you're not dying, I guess it's easy to get distracted when you're in a virtual reality environment. So were there any difficulties that you you stumbled across? Yeah, making this game was really hard. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, when you normally make a game, you, you kind of like making a film or music, you reference other people, yeah. you look at what they're making, and you say, oh, I like this bit, I like that bit, maybe we could do something like this. But because it was a new experience, there is no other sort of 2D platformer in VR. We had to do a whole load of prototyping. I'd say out of 100 ideas, maybe four of them get through because you're, you don't know what's going to work. You have to constantly test it. You have to constantly put it to people and see what they think because there is nothing to reference, like I say. So it, it did take a lot of hard work and a lot of, a lot of man hours to get it done. And another thing was like trying, trying to sync that 2D and 3D. It's, we didn't want it to be like, this is just a 3D space and this is just a 2D space. We wanted that to blend and we wanted it to feel like you're actually a part of that world. So we had to do a lot of stuff to try and get that to work. I was going to say, just from playing it just then, I honestly think you did it really well, especially when the bees were were within the 2D game, and then I just realised as they were becoming like, 3D, I don't, I don't even know when they started becoming 3D, I was like, oh wait, they're coming towards me now, yeah. okay. And yeah, that really helps to make you feel immersed, so i got to say kudos to that. And just the whole idea, it's 
it's so unique and different. I'm wondering what kind of feedback did you get along the way? Because I'm sure you had to do a lot of testing to see what people thought. Did they like the fact that they were just kind of stationary? When we started out making Lost Bear, like I said, we wanted to make a sit-down experience. With PSVR, you're not necessarily getting hardcore VR gamers. It's an attachment to the PS4, so some people have got it just because it's an oddity. Or So we wanted to make something that people could play. It's not too difficult. You could do it in one sitting and you could get a real feeling for what VR is. But the question we always got is, why is it in VR? Why are you putting a 2D platformer in VR? My answer to that is, like, why do you go to an IMAX movie instead of a normal movie? It's just, it's more immersive. You're in that world. You're not just playing a 2D platformer. You're part of the Lost Bear world. So you mentioned that you chose PSVR or you enjoyed developing for PSVR because of the, the target audience. I was wondering about that because obviously VR, there's multiple different platforms, multiple different headsets to develop for. I'm guessing you probably looked at everything else like Vive and Oculus, so what made this appeal to you? From a dev point of view, working in PSVR is the most comfortable. The headset's the nicest, so uh, that's kind of why we went with that. But from a business point of view, I guess there's the most people play PSVR. It's the biggest one. There's two million headsets out there now. So we could get Walnut's story out to as many people as possible and, and get people enjoying it and showing developers and publishers that there are other experiences you can play and make. You don't always have to make a first-person shooter and people will buy it and enjoy it. So that was kind of our reason for going down PSVR. That's really nice. And what, what are the, um, what's the community like around it as a developer? Is, is there quite a nice kind of game developer PSVR community where you can all reach out and kind of knock ideas together? So, I don't know. From a developer point of view, I would say, yeah, there is, but it's kind of very limited. People are really secretive about what they're making, especially with VR. From a player point of view, then PSVR Reddit has really like backed us a lot. There's all, and the community is just crying out for new content because I think on the store at the minute, there's 100 games compared to like PS4's hundreds of thousands of games. So they're really, really supportive of the developers and want them to make new stuff. So it's nice. I love the way that you talk about the narrative and the story in this and the protagonist player. Do you have any tips for aspiring developers who want to really tell a narrative through their game and how you can use virtual reality to help with telling these stories? Okay, so The Lost Bear was actually a uni project. It was the director Dan's uh, final year project. And it's based on his little sister. His little sister used to like wander off into the woods and come back like nothing had happened. So it's kind of our imagination of that. So I would say to aspiring developers, like just work with what you know. Work. Something simple is, is always a hundred times better than something super complicated. And something we really try to do with Lost Bear is try and tell in that story through emotive animations rather than a block of text. Because I don't play games to sit there and read a book. I could do. I could read a book if I wanted to read a book. I want to be immersed in that world. So we want to make animations that are expressive, that make you connect to that character, make you want to help that character out. So that's what we tried to do with Walnut in The Lost Bear, and and Pixar really does that really well. Like a lot of their shorts are doing that. Like if you've seen La Luna or their latest one, The Sandpiper, they're they're awesome little stories that are told really well through animation. So I think that's really important. Do you say it's in university? So. Yeah, yeah. But you said it took about six months to actually develop this yeah. game. So how long has it been from the concepting stage, would you say? So we've been out of uni. Oddbog's been a company for three years now. Two years we were working on another project that hasn't been announced yet. And then we've been working on the Lost Bear for the last three, uh, six months. Six months isn't a very long time either. I think that, kudos to you. That's really good for six months. It's six months, but that's like six months of weekends and late nights and sleeping in the office. So. Yeah. Worth it's it worth though. It. Yeah, in the end, it's worth it. <laughs> at the time when you're sweaty and sad that the game's not right, but at the end of it. But you're now happy. you can sleep happy. Yeah, now I can. Yeah. Yeah. What are the overall uh, reviews that people have been giving you? So at the minute, we're getting really good reviews. We, we're getting anywhere between sevens and tens, which we're really happy with. VR Focus, which is one of the big VR websites, gave us a ten out of ten, which we loved. And lots of people are just saying like it's a really new experience and it's something that you, sh you should be buying for your PSVR because it is different to what's out there. So we're happy about that. So it was definitely worth all the time, time and effort. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Definitely. So I know you say you're working on a secret project, but is there a sequel to this game that people can look forward to? Well, I don't know if there's going to be a sequel to Lost Bear. 
who knows? But we're definitely working on our next project. So there's definitely more to look forward to. There's definitely another 2D game coming from Oddbug, yeah. VR? Who knows? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and because I am a game dev student, um, I just want to ask everyone if there was one piece of advice you could give to someone trying to get into the games industry, studying game development, or even teaching themselves, what would it be? From my point of view, it's work for yourself, be indie, make stuff for yourself, don't make stuff to impress somebody else, make something that you want to make, and then hopefully that will impress somebody else. That's, that would be my advice. That's great advice, thank you. Oddbox Studio has a website, has Twitter, it's all under Oddbox, so just look for that. Lost Bear is on the PlayStation Store, so if you just search in the VR section, it's nine ninety nine in Europe and $13 in America, I think, so yeah. Affordable and worth it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's about an hour long, so we wanted to keep it fairly cheap because we wanted you to have an experience that you kind of had in one go. You sat down, you immersed in that world, and then you come out of it feeling happy, hopefully. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, uh, awesome. Thank you. You're very professional. I liked it. Oh, thanks. <laughs>